Good morning, Restore Community Church. It is my pleasure to be maybe the first to wish you a hearty Merry Christmas. It is my favorite time of the year. I've got uh, 12 Christmas jumpers that are going into rotation. You're not going to see me till January without looking festive because I love the Christmas season. I love almost everything about it. Uh, the joy to the world, peace across the globe. I love, love, love Christmas. And we are here today, you are here this morning to, to, to begin this journey about Jesus, the real meaning of Christmas, the Christ in Christmas, if you will. And we're going to zero in on one specific prophecy that was declaring Christ coming centuries before it ever did. So if you want to dive into your Bible, we're going to open it up to Isaiah chapter 9, starting in verse 6. Uh, the, the next four weeks, we're going to be parceling out this verse, discussing its meaning, and ultimately just talking about Jesus and how great and mighty and wonderful it is, He is. So in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, the prophet declared, for us, or for to us, a child is born. To us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. That each name in this passage reveals something profound about the meaning and character of Christ. And today, we're going to focus on the first one, Wonderful Counselor. Now, at first glance, the words wonderful counselor may sound like a poetic description that, oh, doesn't that just sound nice? Doesn't that kind of just make you warm and fuzzy? Oh, wonderful counselor. Oh, bless his heart. But when we dig deeper into the meaning of these words and their original Hebrew meaning, we, we discover something far, far more extraordinary. The Hebrew word for wonderful is Pele. Now, we're not talking about the famous Brazilian player here, but Pele, I'm, I might even be pronouncing it wrong. You might need to put more, a little more phlegm into it. Pele? Oh, that was, that just sounded all kinds of wrong, so please forgive me. This, this word signified something miraculous, something astonishing, something beyond human understanding and comprehension. This isn't something kind of like, oh, wasn't that wonderful? Oh, didn't we have a pleasant time at that garden party? Oh, the views were simply wonderful. Oh, the gardenias this year, oh, they're just so wonderful. No, when the Hebrew word Pele for wonderful describes something extraordinary beyond this dimension, beyond human understanding, and something only God could achieve something outside of man's capability and hands. And the word for counselor, which is yoetz, which describes one who provides wise guidance, purpose, and instruction. A, a counselor for them was not merely someone who listens to our problems and, and could give you some good advice, but it's someone who knows the best course of action for you specifically. And, it, and one who gives us clarity to move forward. And in ancient times, counselors were trusted advisors to kings, offering strategies of government, of leadership, of warfare, of economy. The list goes on. Together, we put those two words here in Isaiah to paint a picture of Jesus as the ultimate source of divine wisdom and guidance, someone whose insight is beyond the human understanding, the human comprehension with our human eyes in this world, but somebody who sees the beginning and the end, who sees every intricate part in it, someone whose advice leads us to life, to hope, and to purpose. That's Jesus. That's our wonderful counselor. 
So what does that mean fully for us today? How can Jesus, the wonderful counselor, guide us in our modern lives? Filled with challenges and uncertainties and, and layoffs at our job and budget cuts and oh, the, the, the car needs work done, just as more money. Or like, oh, grandmother, she just came down, you know, the doctor just gave her a diagnosis of cancer. How does the wonderful counselor, how can he step in to give us that advice, that purpose that's beyond our human capabilities? I think back to the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7 in, the, in this message. Jesus didn't share good advice. Oh, these are great morals, guys. If we just treat each other right, oh, the world could change. Let's all sing kumbaya to each other now. Let's all hold hands. No, he taught true blessedness comes not from wealth or power, but from humility, mercy, love, a pure heart pouring out for its neighbor. He called people to love their enemies, to forgive everyone and to trust God completely. His words back then were radical. Today, they're still radical. They're challenging. They are life-changing. And so these personal experiences with God, he spoke back then when he spoke to Nicodemus, a Pharisee, he comes to Jesus seeking understanding in the middle of the night. Rabbi, how can I be in heaven? How can I make it? And Jesus says to him that he needs to be born again. When the Samaritan woman met Jesus at the well, he spoke directly to the deepest need of her heart. Yeah, I get you want some water from this well, but what you really want is what I have for you. Jesus met people where they are. He meets us where we are. And that's really the amazing part. Jesus isn't stuck in these pages being the wonderful counselor. He's here with us in his spirit and still in the word. He continues to offer some guidance to those who seek him Hebrews 13, uh, verse 8, reminds us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That this wisdom applies to today. And as we prepare our hearts for Christmas, the joy of Christmas, giving and receiving of presents, giving of our time to those less fortunate, sharing love to the lonely, and the brokenhearted, and those of our family, that their heart may already be full. A time of fellowship, and love, and companionship, and generosity, and mercy. It's funny how this time celebrates the season we've set, around, set aside to celebrate the birth of the Savior of all mankind. So let's, let's, let's talk about it. Jesus is with us today. His, the, the guidance, the counselors that advised kings back then, we have a counselor today advising us through his word, and advising us through prayer, through worship, that God is not silent. I, I once heard a pastor say that we're not really waiting on God for us to speak to, to us. God's waiting for us to listen. That if we truly still our hearts, still our minds, still the things around us, we will know that he is God and we will know his word as he speaks to us. We will recognize the shepherd's voice. So we need to take time 
to let Jesus counsel us, to give us advice that nobody here could, because his thoughts are for us to prosper. His thoughts are for the desires of our hearts to come to fruition. Now, I'm not talking about a Lamborghini suddenly th showing up in your driveway. I'm not talking about you getting the, the home you've always dreamed of. I'm talking about the true desires of her heart, like that woman at the well, the Samaritan woman showing up to Jesus and just asking for some water, wanting some water. And Jesus is saying, I've got what you really want, what your soul wants. So we need to go to Jesus so he can advise us on the way to get what our soul really wants, that which would make us actually feel happy, actually be content. Because that's what a loving father wants for any of their children. And that includes you. That includes me. So we need to seek his guidance. So I encourage you to let's set some time aside this season. It, for some people, this is kind of the busiest month of their life. I got this party to go to, that party to go to, this family member to go to, this family member to go to. But if we set some time aside to listen to our wonderful counselor, it's so strange that the King of Kings is willing to set aside time to advise me. Oh, what a humbling thought. What a humbling thought that is. So it's set time aside to seek the Lord, to seek his advice. So let's, say, let's do that now. Why not now? Why not right now? We've gone to his word. That, that's a great first step. Now let's go to him. So let's pray. Father, I'll start off by saying, uh, you've heard it a thousand times and you'll hear it a thousand more. Father, thank you for sending your son to die for my sins. To come to this world earth through a virgin's womb, born as a pauper, the king of the Jews, born in a barn. But your glory shone through. Your ministry changed this world. Your sacrifice saved your people, your sons and your daughters. But Father, here I am, 2,000 years later. God, in the world, it feels like it just gets tougher. It gets a little darker. It gets a little more chaotic. What's our avenue? What's the path I need to take? What's my next step? Father, that I may trust in you that you know more than me. And you will lead me beside still waters. Lead me to green pastures. Places of, to benefit, to grow, to rest. So Jesus, let's take time meditate on you being the wonderful counselor. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Thank you so much for stopping by with us, guys. Tune in next week as we're going to continue to untie this verse from Isaiah. We've got three more names to go to, three more Sundays before Christmas. And I hope you have a joyous season. Uh, until the new year, I'll see you next time. Bye.